Well, the new thing is, of course, that we have SMBs, we have enterprises, we have hospitals, we have manufacturing. All of them are now going for 5G. Hmm. If you think about all the AI applications in your smartphones, moving into glasses, AI-based assistant in your glasses, all of that will put new requirements onto network. But India has taken some really important decisions, actually not just now, but over the last period, which has enabled this fantastic rollout of, hmm. of 5G, the fastest rollout in the world. A foresighted government that is seeing hmm. what's around the corner Corner right. and make sure there is enough licensed spectrum available. Right. Uh, we have been fortunate to serve India and be in India since 1903. Yeah. So we have also expanded mm. part of the portfolio mm. very much in, in what we are doing mm. in, in Bangalore, in Chennai, here in, in uh, sort of mm. close by in Gorgan. Hi, I'm Danish from Money Control, and uh, we have Eric Ekadin uh, joining us. Uh, uh, for the Money Control podcast. He's the CTO of uh, Swedish telecom gear maker uh, Ericsson. Welcome to the podcast, Eric. Well, thanks for having me, Danish. So, we are attending, we have met in the past covering, I, I covered Mobile World Congress, India Mobile Congress since last nine years. We always discuss uh, Indian telecom industry, global telecom industry and the advancements. Now that you have joined India Mobile Congress this year, mm. what sort of feed, what is your experience? Like you have spoken with a lot of stakeholders. What change that you see in the Indian market now? Mm. I think it's a good starting point. The energy that we see now in IMC 25, it's just bustling everywhere. I have to say I saw a little bit of that uh, same feeling already last year because I think India has now one of the world's strongest 5G networks and of course that that brings the industry to a new point. Then it's not about deployment as such, it's much more about what you can do with the technology, what 5G can enable in not just consumers but enterprise space. And I think that is really the takeaway for the whole industry. There are those front-running markets where 5G it started to be leveraged to its full extent. Hmm. And uh, that creates sort of opportunities. We talked about the growth opportunities that come with that. Hmm. That's what I see. Right. Uh, that doesn't mean that, of course, everything is done because we still have some more rollout. We still have some more upgrades of networks. But uh, in a way, we have reached almost this pivoting point where we're moving into the second wave of 5G and mm. of the whole mobile industry. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, during uh, the speeches and during the uh, uh, roundtables uh, in, in government officials and the minister, even even Prime Minister Modi talked about 6G mm. and what India is doing and uh, uh, what is the aspiration when it comes to 6G, like giving our feedback into the 3GPP standard because mm. India wants our needs to be included in the standard. So how do you see India's role so far? Do you think this is the right strategy to start early and have a say in terms of development of the uh, new standard in the telecom industry? I think so. Mm. I think uh, having a strong view, which is long term, because mm. telecom is an industry that is continuous evolving, but it's a long term investment and digital infrastructure is critical infrastructure. So um, I, of course, see uh, all the, the reasons to, to be early or to be leading and driving in that. I think there is something really important to be said about the evolution now. That's why I mentioned the second wave or moving into the new way of thinking about mobile systems. It starts with 5G today, actually and that will evolve into 60. And what is really new then? Well, the new thing is, of course, that we have SMBs, we have enterprises, we have hospitals, we have manufacturing, all of them are now going for 5G hmm. and a resilient cloud infrastructure as their digital infrastructure to build applications on, AI applications or hmm. smartphone applications. All of that hmm. happens when you have a strong 5G network. Then right. you're moving into the second phase. Hmm. And that's where 6G comes in, because hmm. there are requirements already that we see from these use right. cases that hmm. are not satisfied with 5G. Hmm. And of course, an upgrade then, hmm. getting into, let's say, a 2030 time frame, right. that right. needs to be started hmm. planning hmm. For, for right now. Right, right. Uh, at the global scale, global level, AI is getting all the attention. Hmm. So what is AI doing in the telecom world? Well, AI is everywhere, uh, both in terms of AI applications as well as AI in the network. And um, if you think about all the AI applications in your smartphones, moving into glasses, AI-based assistant uh, in your glasses, all of that will put new requirements onto networks. So it's very important for us to be able to serve our customers, operators primarily, with the best network for AI. And that journey has already started with 5G leading into mm. 5G standalone, network slicing, network APIs to mm. be able to program that mm. network to create a great AI experience. Right. But then you have the other mm. sort of side of the coin, which mm. is really that already since some years we mm. have built in 
AI and autonomous functions into the networks, mm. in the radio network, in the core network, in the orchestration, and that of course gives two things. It gives uh, operational efficiency, which I think is what every operator is looking for, but perhaps more importantly, it gives the ability mm. to differentiate services, create tailored user experience for different sectors, for different customer groups, right. and certainly differences between enterprise and consumers. Mm. All of this, when you can do that at scale mm. with the help of AI in right. the network, autonomous network level four will enable that. I think that's opening up a growth opportunity. Mm. So operators have a chance to mm. capture a big part of the, the new growth here. Right, right. So beyond uh, AI, uh, which are the futuristic technologies uh, telecom industry is working on, players like Ericsson is, is focused on? Because a few years back, uh, Open ran, we yeah. ran, they were kind of uh, the buzzword in the industry, but uh, yeah. uh, that is no longer there. Maybe they have evolved into something else. But from an Ericsson perspective, which are those uh, things that uh, the, the, the industry is focused on at the moment? Yeah, well, first of all, I think openness is something we're driving very consciously, and it will be with us as we move into 5G Advanced and 6G as well. But I think that what, what you may find uh, sort of new and exciting technologies we probably have uh, either a showcase here in IMC uh, as a lab uh, or a right. proof of concept, something that's uh, already being researched in our R&D facilities, mm. a mm. lot of it actually together right. with university right. partners right. like the mm. IITs here in India. But what's next? Think about what you can do with a network when you can do this super granular, segmented, differentiated services for any kind of IoT device, any kind of enterprise or consumer service. There's a lot of innovation that happens in that cross area right. of AI and right. networks. Uh, another big topic I think is uh, to explore what networks can be used for as sensors. Mm. We have this integrated sensing and communication, ISAC, which is uh, something that is being put on the table for mm. 60 standardization and some things can be done even, even earlier than that. Uh, and then if you look kind of beyond that, it's really about creating the better link between the applications mm. that need capabilities and the right. networks that provides capabilities. Mm. 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 So we are pretty exciting about the momentum that is now building when it comes to network APIs, mm. programmability. Right. We have Ericsson Vonage, we mm. have the Aduna joint venture together with mm. some of the world's leading CSPs where mm. they can expose their Camara mm. APIs from networks. Right. They get easily consumed mm. over one platform, no matter where you are in the world, no mm. matter what kind of application you have and you know how to pay for it. Mm. Mm. That kind of network API ecosystem is just starting to form right. and we see a great opportunity in that. Mm. And then of course I, I would be remiss not to mention all the cool stuff that is happening when you fuse, for example, mm. medical tech right. with 5G, 6G. Mm. Mm. When you look at, and we have an example actually here about how to innovate on top of the network mm. with ECG sensors right. that are 5G powered mm. would uh, democratize mm. healthcare for doctors mm. in a completely different way. So mm. the innovation that is already mm. happening mm. and not the least here in the ecosystem right. in right. India, that I think is super right. exciting. So is this where we uh, or, or Ericsson will help telcos uh, solve the monetization problem, opening up APIs, resulting in use cases, and uh, ensuring that telcos have enough monetization on their 5G investments? I think uh, some of the leading operators, they are doing part of this on their own. And then we can, of course, support and help operators to create right. those services. But mm. what you find is that a large part, in fact, the majority of all the applications and all the developers, they are looking for something that mm. works multi-country, mm. multi-operator. And that's where we have taken this initiative to make sure that it can scale mm. practically everywhere. Right. It's hard for an individual operator, even if they have great mm. size, mm. perhaps in their country, Right. to get the scale that's mm. required. Mm. And that is what we are bringing. Then, right. of course, this is uh, an effort that we do together with mm. the mm. operator partners. Mm. So they, they, they gain from it by having, of course, mm. more of their services consumed. Right, right. Since you work on technology evolution, mm. and a lot of uh, uh, mindshare is, is uh, going to SATCOM at the moment uh. because of the stakes um, um, of companies like SpaceX, mm. Starlink, because yeah. they are there. Um, they have enough uh, investments towards install, like sending those satellites to the space. Do you think going forward, uh, maybe let's say in, in four to five years, we will have pure convergence between terrestrial and satellite networks, LEO satellites playing a larger role. 
not just for the rural uh, uh, divide but for the urban areas to to fill the gap do you think that is the possibility do you think satcom becoming major in coming years yeah i think that that is very likely <coughs> for a few obvious reasons i think you mentioned some of them in terms mm. of uh, launch capacity mm. and the capability of these right. satellites but it also is a journey that we've been on and actually pioneering and driving for many years you mm. may be familiar with a uh, the way that satellite technology can be integrated with 5G and 6G through mm. the so-called NTN or non-terrestrial right. network capabilities. So the complement of satellite, satellite to terrestrial, I think, will be a great addition mm. over the coming years. Mm. And to your point, it's not just the um, the oceans and the super rural, hard to reach places. I think right. they will be very much uh, helping each other. Mm. Uh, it's of course so that the, the large part of the capacity and, mm. and everything that a user will come to expect right. when it comes to user experience right. will be over the terrestrial network. Mm. But it becomes a very good and important mm. complement. Right. Uh, in India, uh, how do you see the current uh, uh, po uh, policy uh, or regulations uh, uh, for the uh, telecom industry on the spectrum side, on the, on the policy which support uh, uh, ease of doing business, technology development. How do you see the moves uh, made by the Indian government? Do you think we are on the right path or mm. some interventions are required to ensure faster availability, affordable availability of uh, spectrum to the telecom operators so that they can ensure that technologies like 5G A and in future 6G is timely rolled out in the market? Well, it may be more a question for, for our customers since they are directly affected. But what I observe from our point of view is that India has taken some really important decisions, actually not just now but over the last period, which has enabled this fantastic rollout of, mm. of 5G, the fastest rollout in the world. But it has also enabled basically the inclusion of everyone in India to, to be able to have 5G services, if not now in the very near term mm. future. Mm. And I see the same foresight on the government side now when it looks to the future. I mm. think you, you mentioned before the upcoming 60 right. cycle and, mm. and what that will bring with it. Mm. I, I'm hopeful, I'm, mm. uh, of course this is for, for government to decide, but I'm hopeful that India will mm. pave the way also by releasing and making sure there right. is enough license right. spectrum right. 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 as you need to evolve capacity wise. Mm. Mm and then you go to 60, mm. but also performance-wise, mm. because mm. one of the things that I think the industry is now realizing is mm. that what we've been used to, which is to build networks and optimize networks for very downlink heavy mm. traffic, typically web browsing and videos, right. and right. many services are, are great in that space, mm. but in the future we will have much more uplink traffic, mm. and that's a demanding service on the network, so you right. need more spectrum, you need good uplink spectrum, mm. and that will enable mm. completely new experiences. I was mentioning the AI glasses, right. I think they are already coming, mm. uh, becoming commercial now, mm. but, but mm. think one to two years out, mm. they will require much more from the network, mm. so a foresighted government that is seeing mm. what's around the corner right. will make sure there is enough licensed spectrum available, right. I think that's, that's really the right strategy. Right, right, right. Uh, due to the ongoing geopolitical situations, uh, uh, a lot of focus is on the cybersecurity mm. of the networks mm. and, and also the digital sovereignty uh, of networks. What, what are your views uh, and, and how is Ericsson ensuring that your customers and clients are, are, are confident about their networks in the current setup? I think rightly governments and our customers operators take this very serious and that's why Ericsson has been driving and you could say pioneering the way to create uh, cyber resilience or security by design, security by default in our products mm. since long. We have an internal process that we share with our customers in terms of how to deal mm. with security in mm. the networks, privacy in the networks. But I think what has happened and perhaps more accentuated now when networks are used not just for consumers but mm. for enterprises and public safety in governments mm. and maybe even defense is that you get a completely new mm set of requirements in terms of resilience. Mm. So you need to start to make sure that networks keep current, not just the software mm. and the hardware because of, of security, mm. but that you have resilience. So right. when something happens, could be a weather event mm. or, or mm. worse, what is the resilience strategy? What mm. is a backup strategy? Mm. Mm. And there we are working alongside mm. our customers mm. to ensure that these networks mm. can actually mm. not just be improved, mm. but that they can stand up to much, much tougher mm. requirements in the future. Right. And I think uh, if you think of it more from a society point of view, critical to be able to mm. offer these kind of services, right. uh, but it's also in essence a business opportunity mm. because of course operators, they mm. were in the past mainly mm. focused on, on consumer-based services and relatively sort of simple services. We call them best effort services right. because they are very good, but mm. there are no guarantees. Mm. Now we need to move into the space where mm. you actually come with guarantees, mm. SLA-based services. Right. 
And that's a business opportunity to mm. try to segment mm. network services into high end, mm. more sort of mid range, right. and then of course more best effort at the low end. Right. And they right. cannot have the same price. Mm. It's simply impossible to deliver these mm. super high performance services mm. at the top end right. of the segmentation at mm. the same low price as, as a low end. So mm. a segmentation is inevitable. And right. I think we're right. going in that direction mm. with, with quite some speed now. Right, right. Uh, in terms of uh, India's relevance and not just as a market, Mm. But as a hub of innovation, you have yeah. large R&D center and the, as a we CTO, do. you have a lot of uh, work to do in India and get things done. Yeah. So has the, has the work, um, uh, uh, rather, uh, has the work uh, taken more importance in India in terms of developing newer teleco telecom technologies? Uh? It has. Mm. Uh, I have to say, though, that uh, we have been fortunate to serve India and be in India since 1903. So this is not a kind of a new thing for Ericsson. But uh, yes, you're right. We mm. have increased our mm. presence, but we have also expanded mm. part of the portfolio mm. very much in, in what we're doing mm. in, in Bangalore, in Chennai, here in, in uh, sort mm. of close by in Gorgon. What we are doing is to work with the latest technology. So mm. we're working with, of course, the evolution of the cloud native systems. We're working with the evolution of IP and transport, but also AI, as mm. AI becomes more network right. AI native. So we've had, since we started our effort when it comes to telecom AI, we've mm. had a, a strong site mm. uh, in, in southern India. That is just continuing. We also have activities now on the mm. hardware side mm. with establishing an ASIC team. Right. Some of these capabilities, they are drawing on the fantastic talent mm. in India, mm. but it's also very much about collaboration because mm. we also have fantastic teams in other parts of right. the world. So right. now we are bringing mm. sort of the competence together mm. across sites. Right. And India is, of course, a critical part of that. Well. Well, Eric, fascinating conversation on various themes and uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you and getting uh, uh, an update on what's happening in the telecom world at the global level. And uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, for the Money Control uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.